हेलो एवरीवन वी विल डिस्कस द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक द कंप्लीटनेस प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ रियल नंबर इन ऑर्डर टू डिस्कस द कंप्लीटनेस प्रॉपर्टी वी फर्स्ट इंट्रोड्यूस सम डेफिनेशंस फर्स्ट वी विल डिफाइन व्हाट वी मीन बाय बाउंडेड सेट सो नाउ इफ यू हैव एनी सबसेट एस ऑफ आर देन दैट सेट इज सेट टू बी बाउंडेड अबव इफ देयर एग्जिस्ट अ रियल नंबर यू सच दैट एस इज लेस देन इक्वल टू यू फॉर एवरी एस इन एस then this number u is called upper bound of s as you can see in this diagram if you have this set s then every element in s is less than equal to u so this u is upper bound similarly if every element in s is greater than some element say l that is l is less than equal to s for every s in s then this l is called lower bound of s now a non empty set is said to be bounded if it is both bounded above and bounded below in other words a set s is bounded if there exist real numbers l and u such that every element of this set s lies between l and u if a set is not bounded then we say that that set is unbounded Let us see this example. If you have a set S which consists of all those real numbers which are less than three, then we can see that the set is bounded above by three. That is, u is equal to three. Any number which is larger than three, that is four, five, six, so on, all these numbers are also upper bound of S. We can also see that there is no lower bound of this set S. Thus. this set s is unbounded even though it is bounded above next example you have set of natural numbers which is equal to 1 2 3 and so on now this set is not bounded above but this set is bounded below by 1 any number lower than 1 will again be a lower bound of this set n but since this is not bounded above this set n of natural numbers is unbounded next example if you have the set s of 1 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 so on then we can see that this set is bounded above by 1 and bounded below by 0 so this is a bounded set mm -hmm. now last example set of integers is unbounded since it is neither bounded above nor bounded below let us look at these remarks if a set has upper bound then any number which is greater than that is also an upper bound so a set if a set has one upper bound it has infinitely many upper bound for example if suppose you have this number u is upper bound then any number which is greater than u that is also upper bound so if a set has one upper bound it has many upper bound Simil similar result holds for lower bound so if it has one lower bound then any number which is less than that will also be a lower bound so if ha if it has one lower bound it has infinitely many lower bounds now a set may or may not possess an, an upper bound or a lower bound that is in this example s equal to all those real numbers which are less than 3 it has an upper bound 3 but it does not have any lower bound also in set z it neither had a real it neither had an upper bound nor a lower bound next remark bounds of a set may or may not belong to the set that is the upper bound or lower bound may or may not belong to that set for example if you have this set of real numbers lying between 0 and 1 then clearly upper bound is 1 and lower bound is 0 but 0 and 1 are not in this set s so it may or may not belong to the set now we come to de definitions of supremum and infimum let s be a non empty set of r then s If S is bounded above, then a number u is called supremum. If suppose you have this set S and you have a number u, if set S is bounded above, then the number u is called supremum or the least upper bound of S if it satisfies two conditions. First, u is an upper bound of S, and second, if v is any upper bound of S. if v is any upper bound of s then u must be less than equal to v that is u is the least upper bound similarly if s is bounded below then a number l 
is called infimum or the greatest lower bound if L is lower bound of S and if any number M is lower bound of S then M is less than equal to L. We note that any non-empty set S of R can have at most one supremum. So if suppose it have two supremum say U1 and U2 then by definition U1 is less than equal to U2 since U2 is an upper bound. Also if we have U1 as least upper bound then we get U2 is less than equal to U1. Please note that any non-empty subset S of R can have at most one suprema. If suppose U1 and U2 are both suprema of S, then U1 is less than equal to U2 because U1 is the least upper bound and U2 is any upper bound. Similarly, we can also say that U2 is less than equal to U1. Combining these two, we get U1 is equal to U2. Now, we can say similar argument for infimum also that if it exists it is unique we denote the supremum by sup s and infimum by inf of s also note that supremum s is the smallest of all upper bound that means we can say that if u is any arbitrary upper bound then supremum supremum of s is less than equal to u and if L is any arbitrary lower bound, then L is less than equal to infimum of S. Also, it is important to note that in order for a non-empty set S of R to have supremum or infimum, it must have an upper bound or a lower bound. Thus, not every subset of R has a supremum or infimum. We can have either of these four possibilities that it have both supremum and infimum, either supremum and no infimum, infimum but no supremum or both neither supremum nor infimum we come to this theorem if s is a non-empty subset of r that has an upper bound then a real number u is the supremum of s if and only if it satisfies the following condition s is less than equal to u for every s in s and if v is less than equal to u then there exists some number s dash from s such that v is less than s dash. See in this diagram that if you have u as supremum of s and v is any number which is less than u then there exists some member s dash which I have marked in green such that v is less than s dash. So let us start with the proof. If suppose u is supremum of s, then by definition u is an upper bound of s. So we get that s is less than equal to u for every s in s. Thus u satisfies this first condition. Now for second part, if v is less than u, then v cannot be an upper bound of s because u, u was the smallest upper bound possible. So there exists some member of this set s, say s dash, such that v is less than s dash this proves the condition second conversely suppose u is any real number which satisfies the two conditions now we want to show that u is supremum of s so we need to show the definition that u is an upper bound of s and second part that if v is any upper bound of s then u should be less than equal to v now first part follows from the given fact only the con so the, uh, we get that u is an upper bound of s for second part if suppose v is any upper bound of s then u is less than equal to v otherwise if v is less than u then from condition 2 we get there exists some element of s such that v is less than s dash which contradicts the fact that v is an upper bound of s Therefore, U must satisfy both conditions 1 and 2. Similar theorem can be seen for the infimum. So, if S is any non-empty set that has a lower bound, then a real number L is the infimum of S if and only if it satisfies two conditions. First is that L is less than equal to S for every S. And if L is less than M, then there exists some S dash in that set S such that S dash is less than M. Now we come to next theorem. If S is a non-empty subset of R that has an upper bound U, 
then u is the supremum of s if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists s in that set s such that u minus epsilon is less than s so see in this diagram that if you have any set s which is bounded above by u then u minus epsilon will not be a upper bound then there will be some member of s which is greater than this u minus epsilon so see this proof first suppose that the upper bound u satisfies the stated condition that is for every epsilon u minus epsilon is less than s now to show u is supremum we have to prove that there is a number less than u to show u is supremum we will prove that no number less than u can be an upper bound so if suppose we have a number v which is less than u set epsilon equal to v u minus v so epsilon is greater than 0 now there exists s in the set s such that u minus epsilon is less than s according to the condition that is v is less than s so v is not an upper bound therefore u is supremum of s conversely if u is supremum of s then for any positive epsilon u minus epsilon is less than u so u minus epsilon is not an upper bound thus there exists some s in this set s such that u minus epsilon is less than this number s similar result can be seen for infimum now we come to next theorem if s is non-empty subset of r that has a lower bound l then l is the infimum of s if and only if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists some number s from s such that s is less than l plus epsilon the proof is similar to the above the proof is similar let us see these examples if we have this set of real numbers x1, x2, xn which is bounded. Its supremum is the largest number. So we take supremum s as maximum of from x1, x2 till xn. And infimum is the smallest of all these numbers. So infimum is minimum of x1, x2 till xn. This maximum will be some number out of these x1 to xn. And similarly minimum will be some from x1 to xn. Clearly these two supremum and infimum will belong to the set s. Next example, consider this set of real numbers such that x lies between 0 and 1. Now we claim that supremum of s is 1. Clearly 1 is an upper bound. Now for any epsilon greater than 0, if we take s dash equal to 1 minus epsilon by 2, such that 1 minus epsilon, such that 1 minus epsilon is less than s dash, then it follows that supremum of s is equal to 1 because 1 minus epsilon by 2 will not be an upper bound now similarly it can be shown that infimum of this set is 0 clearly both infimum and supremum will belong to this set s now third part we can show that supremum and infimum are 0 and 1 similar to the previous part but here 0 and 1 will not belong to the set s we finally come to the completeness property of real numbers now the completeness property of real number states that for every non empty subset of R that is bounded above it has a supremum in R. We have already discussed the algebraic and order properties of real numbers. So we can say that R is an ordered field. Using this completeness property we say that R is a complete ordered field.